So welcome to uh, another vlog where I basically talk about my magic books um, and ignore the ones that I haven't read. So I stopped last time because I was just about to get onto my Waltons. Now my Walton Volume 1 is at home, but there's my uh, uh, Volume 2 and 3. And I've, ju man, I've, I've had these for, for a long time and I've just, I wouldn't say just, in the last year started getting really into them. And for some reason I was trying to think of why I found them hard to get into before because I knew they were good. Um, I think it basically comes down to learning styles. So the the Walton books, especially the first one, are very little in the way of illustration than pictures. Now, <laughs> I sound like a child, and I don't like you got them pictures in it. But it's not that the, it's not the lack of pictures, but it's, uh, well, two things. First of all, the it's not about the text and the way the way it's, it's really dense. There's so much in there. I, got, I mean, it would take so long to go through the first book and learn everything, which is the issue I've got because I'm kind of going through the first book and learning everything or picking out the the bits that I want. Um, but there, I mean, there's just so much stuff. And the 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 thing is when they, the tricks are introduced, the, the effect isn't said. So it doesn't say the effect is this and, and here's the method. Um, what it is, it's kind of like you, you read the method and then sort of the, the effect is within it. So that, that I found quite difficult because I, I like to sort of scan books and see the effects and see what ones appeal to me. But you've got to kind of read the whole trick before you, you, you kind of get the effect. But that's not necessarily, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that I, that, that personally I found, I found difficult to, to kind of break through. The other thing that's really interesting in it is he doesn't really oversell the tricks. And you know that some books you're reading, have, you've got, you know, you'll start reading a trick and it'll go, you've got to learn this trick. If, if, any, if this is worth the price of the book alone, this is going to blow people out. Don't talk about any of that. He might sort of very, nicely and gently say this is a great trick and but all that but there's none of that kind of hyperbole so again you, it, it's so understated that you kind of read it and you don't realize how good that trick is until you do it and then you go oh, that's brilliant but because it, it doesn't really sell it it just kind of it, it explains the trick and again which is definitely not a negative but it's just something you, you're so used to in magic books uh that it takes a bit of getting over so you read a trick and it will read, read quite kind of nonchalantly and then you'll do it and it'll blow people away so you know the the smiling mule and things like that had come to mind um so they're the two things and like i said the lack of illustration of the few illustrations and it very basic illustrations um but you but it doesn't you know you open it up and it's just dense writing and i think for a reader of, of non-fiction that can sometimes create a barrier which isn't actually there so my advice is get get the books especially book one uh, I'll show you a trick out of it now. I actually, I've only just learned it, so bear with me, because it's not, it's not like I'm performing it that well. It's not like I've got an amazingly scripted pattern or anything. But just the thinking of it, and it's quite a long trick. It's quite an Elmsley count trick, but I like it. I think it's called um, Smokescreen, I think. Uh, but it's got loads of tricks like this, but it has, even though this trick isn't very snappy, I'm just working on it at the moment, so I thought I'd show you, because maybe you could give me some feedback. But also, uh, it's got some really quick tricks, like the, the Smiley Mule, which I teach on, on the card course, and uh, with permission, which is lovely. Um, and this JB transposition, so really clever uses of, of kind of second dealing and palming, but in, on very direct tricks. Now, there are tricks in it that are less direct, that involve lots of uh, stacks and stuff, but I don't, I don't really, I'm terribly lazy. When I see a trick and you have 20 cards in any kind of order, I don't tend to go with it, unless it's just a new moniker or something like that. So, um, yeah, just, just, just have a look at it because I, I, think, I think you could, you know, just that, if you had that one book on your shelf, um, for the geekier part of it, for the hobbyist in us, and there are tricks that I do professionally in it, of course, but, but it just, you know, you do that book and you're going to have a reason to learn everything, like second dealing, palming, uh, all that stuff, cover pass, it explains all that and how to use it. So... I really, really recommend it. It's actually a load of, I think it's a load of um, older short publications all packed into one, and that's this book one. And then book three was released relatively recently with, with Card Warp and a lot of his stuff that he released after book one. So uh, have a look at it, and, and here's the trick. Uh, any feedback would be great, uh, other than that shit. Uh, but you can say that as well if you want. Here's a little trick with four queens, but first of all, we'll get a card selected. Uh, there it is, the four of diamonds. And uh, I said it was a trick before queen, so we'll find the queens. The first queen is there on the bottom of the deck. Uh, the second queen is just there on the top. And if we just fill the deck there, we've got two other queens here. Right. So a little bit of a little bit of an audition trick for the queens. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna stick one of them face down 
you know, the face up ones, and all of a sudden they've all turned face down again. We'll do the same with two, two face down into two face up. We've got the same thing again, we've got four face down. In fact, if I put all three on top of there, flip over again, we've got exactly the same thing of four face down queens. The same happens the other way. So we start off with all the cards face down. You can just see if we put one queen in the pack, all of a sudden we've got two queens in the pack. Give a little click, and then we've got three queens just there. Give a little click again, we've got one, two, three, four queens face up. But that isn't the trick. The trick is that card that we had chosen. So Now these four queens have caught a card in between them, which is the four diamonds. <laughs>